please visit newheightseducation.org and contact us. New Heights Educational Group, educational resources to help reach your goals. This podcast is brought to you by Silicon Valley High School, the world's fastest growing, video-based, self-paced, teacher-supported, fully accredited online school that's recommended by more than 96% of students. Take individual courses at just $95 each or earn your high school diploma at any age. Check us out at svhs.co. Welcome back. This is your host, Buffy Williams, and you're listening to the New Heights Show on Education, the New Heights Educational Group. And tonight's topic is multimedia learning and multimedia in education. Before the break, we just uh, had a recap of why multimedia has um, hit this ed tech boom and why um, it's a growing trend in how students learn uh, on the K through in the K through twelve area and beyond, and also um, why teachers may lean towards a multimedia format. And in an educational context, you know, a teacher really, the, the ultimate goal is for the student to retain the information and to learn the information. And so we want to be, as educators, um, someone who bridges that gap and gives students an opportunity to be able to um learn in different formats and learn in a way that is going to enhance um, their uh, educational experience and also allow them to be able to process that information in a way that can be useful and that can be um, explored in different aspects of education and, and ultimately into their life and integrate it into a way that is very useful and meaningful for them. And so there are various ways um, of various options for multimedia um, formats and content in the educational setting. And one of the most common that we know is, of course, slideshow presentations or, or presentations in general. And so if a teacher is doing a lecture, they do that in conjunction with uh, a PowerPoint presentation and they show that slide during the presentation within the classroom. But within the multimedia format, one of the things is that they can also, in addition to presenting that information, they could simply record themselves doing that lecture in the classroom, which is one option. And then the other option is to actually set it up in a way where uh, it's called a talking head video. And so the actual, the teacher is, you know, more close up. Um, all the material is there and they're actually talking um, to the students in a more casual format um, regarding the information. And then there's a Zoom presentation where it actually you know, shows information. Then at certain points, it kind of zooms in to um, the course content or, of course, material and kind of zooms back out. And they also have diagrams and infograms, and, and that's simply where they use charts and information to kind of relay the information or give a pictorial of how things interconnect with each other in the classroom. Um, of course, there's podcast, um, which is simply audio, where they can actually talk over um, a presentation and the student can actually hear that over and over again. But again, that's a recorded aspect. And so when you're looking at text and graphics, you're looking at presentations, slides, um, diagrams and infograms. And then there's the audio version, which is just actually audio of, of the uh, instructor. And then there's a video um, portion where um, there's one called screen capture and there's one called lecture capture and lecture capture is what I spoke about um, earlier, which is when they actually record their lecture and it's pre-recorded um, and they have the projection screen and the teacher um, 
in their natural space and they also upload that to a classroom content so that later on the students can actually use quick links within whatever um, database or structure that the school is using and go back and rewind that lecture over and over again. And then we talked about the talking head, which is, of course, a video component as well. And then there's the animation portion. And you see these most commonly like on YouTube where you hear, you know, content and they're actually using animation and word and picture and the actual voiceover of the person kind of explaining um, whatever content there is. And so it's more interactive and it has animations and music and voiceovers in addition to that. And then there's the glass screen is where maybe sometime on YouTube you see an instructor explaining something and they're actually writing on a board but it's actually a clear glass but there's actually a video presentation of them working through a problem and so uh, the student again can rewind that video over and over again and then there are others that um, are incorporated within that as well like webinars and online meetings which I personally like um, for higher education because it's one of those things, you know, once students, you know, get to a certain aspect, especially if it's something related to, let's say, civics or um, something where there's actually going to be um, an art project or something like that. And they have artists and they have a panel of, of um artists within a particular area will say for example and then they actually have an open discussion and they feed off of each other and so the students can learn more about you know what that really means for them what it really means for the panelists and sometimes they can also have an interactive portion to that so in addition to you know just watching people on a panel in a webinar interacting with each other or in an online meeting and learning from that process that's one aspect of it but then another aspect is if they have that portion and then they also open it up for students to be able to actually write in questions or put questions in the chat and then it can be more of an interactive process and so that's also one of the growing multimedia formats that are out there and then there's one that allows um, students to actually collaborate um, using active community communication activities and so it's essentially one of the the teacher has a presentation but they also at the end of it have an interactive type of activity that the student has to do um, in addition to um, the actual course material so it, it puts in practice what they've learned and then there are blogs um, where students can actually kind of more of a discussion board voice their opinion on the particular topic um, that they have with the within the classroom and also interact with their classmates uh, and respond to different things and different aspects and they can kind of explore um, the different avenues of of that particular course material and then they have the interactive content content which is um, where uh, students actually create something in an existing publishing format. Um, all the students have kind of access to it. The teacher actually sees it and at one at once the project is finished or throughout the project has an interactive session within the classroom about different ones um, at various points within the project. And so they actually create the project then they share the project within the classroom in an interactive format through the teacher showing it on a projection screen within the, within or on the smart board within the classroom. And then they reuse that information and they fine tune it and they modify the content and then it's it's uploaded again so that um, students have a video editor and it's more interactive. And so 
those are the main multimedia formats right now. And it gives, and, and with that last one, the interactive content, when the students are creating, sharing, and then modifying and reusing that content, that that particular aspect is um, favorite among teachers because it also actually gives a timer of how long the student actually worked on that particular project and or that particular activity. And so you can kind of see it kind of curtails any um, cheating or anything like that because, you know, the students can actually just go through and just click through through the activity. They actually have to spend time on the activity. And so the teacher can see whether or not they've been thoughtful about the activity and taken their time and work through it or if they just kind of, uh, you know, brush through the activity, not really giving it much um, credence. And so we're talking about multimedia education and multimedia learning. And I hope that, you know, this has been um, useful for you. But I know at the top of the um, at the top of the segment, I kind of went right into multimedia education and multimedia learning because that's our topic for today. But I know that many in our nation uh, are going through so many different things that, you know, multimedia education is probably the last thing that they're thinking about. Um, or it could be something that you're thinking about because you, you're wondering if this is something that your children will continue to have to do at the start of the next year. And so right now, none of us have those answers and we are all in this together. Um, and I recently did uh, a talk with Terry Hyman on her Empowered Spirit show. And I would like to encourage my listeners to um, listen to that. And it's it's um, an interview that Terry Hyman did with me on unveiling um, Southern taboos and the Southern experience for me. Um, and it's at terryhyman.com, The Empowered Spirit Show. And I talk uh, a little bit about what's going on in our culture today. And it actually took place before this particular incident um, that has happened in our society that has prompted so many protests around the world. But uh, it is an impactful um interview and I encourage you to listen to it because it gives my perspective on um, where we are as a nation right now. I know that, you know, education is one of my passions and it is definitely something that I want to be able to bring to you all from from week to week until um, my time with you is ended. But I also want to be able to recap on a lot of the content that we've already gone through. Um, our segment is only a 30 minute segment. And so I want to be able to greater ex uh, elaborate on a lot of the topics that we've already shared and we've already gone through because Sometimes that 30 minutes is just not long enough. And maybe I can also articulate to you more about um, my feelings uh, and perspective on each one of the topics that I've already brought to you. And I'm hoping that um, that format will um, greater enhance your uh, understanding of the K through 12 um, area in education and where you want your children's um, educational career or trajectory to go from here and hopefully aid you in understanding the things that you need to understand to, to give your children uh, a better educational experience and equip them for the world um, in which they will go out into once they graduate from high school. And to our 2020 graduates, we say congratulations to you and we, we wish you well, peace and love. And I'm your host, Buffy Williams. We hope that you join us next week. 
that's our time, and you have been listening to the New Heights Show on Education. I'm your host, Buffy Williams. If you like what you've heard, search for us on your smart speaker and listen to us anytime. Thank you for listening. Good night. Until we meet again next Tuesday night.